शुक्तु जागृति यशस्सुक्तु जागृति काम 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 पुरुष निर्मीमाण निर्मीमाण तदेव शुक्र तदेव शुक्र तद ब्रह्म तद ब्रह्म तदेवामृत मुदेवामृत मुच्यते तस्लोक Good afternoon to all the members present here. Uh, this is uh, a seminar which is. jointly held by Tiruvannamuram branch Kollam branch Kottayam branch and Alappuram branch of ICAI today um, uh, we have with us uh, CA Vital Raj sir to talk about uh, technology in the area of internal financial controls uh, to begin with let me now welcome CA Hari Krishnan our chairman of Kottayam branch to propose a welcome address Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prospected yes, faculty of the day, C. A. Vitalraj, sir, Chairman of Trivandrum, Alappi, Goilon branches of I. C. A. Prospected office bearers of managing committee, esteemed members. Today we are here to. listen to a session on technology and internal financial controls just observe the title itself it is internal financial controls and technology is technology and internal financial controls so this title itself indicates the importance or the gravity with which the technology intervention in area has to be viewed controls are what define an organization just like we are and we have nervous system in an organism or a living human or creature when so many people human beings join together to form an organization be it a business organization a military organization or a police organization the required controls and communication networks and policies and procedures has to be built in then only it can function it's being taught that auditing is a risky profession it hangs around what do you call audit risk control risk business risk detection risk engagement risk financial risk etc on the contrary the management of any audit organization is also faced with or has to address risks like control risk they have to assess their inherent risk and they have to introduce required internal control that in policies and procedures which are designed and implemented and maintained to reduce the Uh, to reduce the effect of inherent risk so that is the controls has to be introduced right from the identifying recording classifying summarizing and presenting and communicating of financial transactions we used to do without much use of technology earlier but in this fourth stage of industrial revolution 
we cannot be cannot do that and we have to embrace technology and we have to ride on the waves of otherwise we will become obsolete as obsolete or even non existent as dinosaurs but use of technology be it in cooking or be it in electric appliances or be it in a atomic reactor the technology of course certainly will make us more efficient more powerful but the more we use technology the more we have to invoke controls for example an uncontrolled nuclear reaction can turn a nuclear reactor to an at nuclear bomb the speed of the reaction has to be controlled similarly in in the i use when we use technology then uh, it it has also got its own set of risks like cyber security risks risks related to third party service provider the possibility of it professionals it personnel gaining unnecessary extra access privilege etc so this is the kind of a situation we are facing so when we deal with the subject we cannot think of a better faculty than ca vital raj the past president and present director on board isak chennai chapter on my personal behalf and on behalf of the four branches i humbly and warmly thank you sir for this session i earnestly welcome all the participants of this session for an enlightening experience thanking you jay in jay icai thank you so much hari krishnan sir for your warm welcome we now request ca rajneesh armuth vice chairman of alpura branch to introduce our faculty for the day ca vital raj thank you sir madam ah uh, yes sir ah uh, yes sir yes sir now better good afternoon all ca vital is a customer and consulting expert and trainer with over 25 years of experience so your voice is not clear so your voice is not clear voice is not audible can you increase okay with over 25 years of experience working with clients in a wide range of industry verticals on it governance cyber security privacy it assurance enterprise risk management and risk based internal audit my qualification is a chartered accountant visa holder caa cisc cdit cism crisc cfe and accredited covid file expert he has consulted a strategic advisor to both and senior management of various entities on cyber safety it strategy erp systems and process and risk management he is a member of rbi standing committee for cyber security and it examination and a member of rbi cyber security assessment framework study he is also a member and cyber security assembly of the ipa technical group on internal and concurrent audit of investment functions of different companies He has served as a member on the International Financial Committee of Isaka International and the advisor for Isaka India. Growth in share. He he has earlier served for two teams as the International Vice President and Director on International Board of Isaka IL USA as a member of Isaka International Audit Committee. He was awarded with President's Award and Certificate of Appreciation for Outstanding Contribution during his term as Director on the Isaka International. His past volunteer experience includes having served on research and technical committee of ICA India, IIA Florida, and Isaka International, ICWA, DC member of MPC. He is a founder and senior partner of Mathers Kumar and Raj Karthikeyan, and director Sustain Consulting Private Limited, leads and manages the business and risk management services across diverse business verticals since the last two decades. is a regular speaker having presented research papers at the several international conferences across several countries and is an expert on the trend of it governance and how it risk management cyber security and information security it auditing enterprise risk management risk based internal audit cyber threat forensics and fraud risk management 
having trained the delegates from various countries that included bond members, GXO, and the express management. Now I shortly welcome Pia Vita Rao to the board. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rajanish sir. Uh, the, audio, the audio was not that clear. And uh, since the custom demanded, uh, we wanted uh, an introduction. Otherwise, I don't think uh, CA Vitalraj sir needs any introduction, uh, especially. Uh, so we now welcome our faculty for the day, CA Vitalraj R. Sir, over to you now. Thank you so much, Ms. Rama. I think it was very well coordinated. Um, and uh, 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 CA Rajneesh sir, uh, thank you for the very kind introduction. Um, I'm sorry, I should have told you that you can just read a few lines. It's customary to just give that as it is. And I think uh, CA Hari Krishnan sir has laid out the foundation very well of this program. Um, in fact, I think he's more competent, I would say, in terms of taking this subject. I think he has uh, clearly brought out the perspectives very clearly. Uh, I would attempt to build on that. And um, I, I mean, uh, he has kind of touched the live wire to tell you that anywhere and everywhere, like what power used to be in our earlier lifetimes, now data and information technology is so. So uh, that's where we are reaching out, uh, you know, to see how we can look at a traditional subject, which is called the, I, the internal financial controls, but look at it from a completely different perspective. Um, I am deeply honored uh, you know that there are four branches which I got together organizing this program and a special uh, mention to uh, CA Padmanabhan, my good friend, who actually reached out to me uh, to ask me if uh, I'd be interested. It's indeed an honor anytime um, to uh, share our thoughts in ICAI. I thank each of you for, uh, I know it's a lot of work that goes at the back end uh, to really organize these things and uh, uh, good programs to everyone and that's how I also benefited in my earlier days and that's where uh, I am. So let's get down to the subject straight away. Um, so can I share my um, presentation Ms. Rama? Yes sir, sure. Yes. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes sir. Yeah. Is the presentation moving? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no moving. Okay, fine. But sometimes we have technology always presents with the risks. So we have to be uh, just making sure that it's done. So <clears throat> as the topic goes, technology and internal financial controls, um, it's a very grim topic in a way, but uh, I'm not going, to, I will try my best not to make it as grim as possible, but take certain examples and see how we can look at this. Uh, frequently, uh, you know, I had been associated as a faculty for ISA earlier for uh, since the start of the, uh, you know, the course um, uh, when, when DISA really started and um, have had the privilege, of course, times I have not been really been part of the faculty, but uh, I continue to uh, teach on the, the CISA, the system and other kind of uh, uh, courses. And the question that frequently I get from chartered accountants is where do I start? I want to learn system audit. I'm very interested, but I don't know where to start. Honestly speaking, since all of us do statutory audit of companies, I think one of the easiest and best places to start with, if you want to really learn uh, or onboard into system audit, IFC is the place to start with. Because anyway, we are obligated to do most of the applicable enterprises as per the company law uh, and internal financial, financial controls evaluation and which is also substantum to our opinion on the financial statements as such. So um, let's get on, maybe start with where we are today. I don't think in this time we can start without mentioning COVID because that's kind of the theme of the day. But then let's theme it to really see when we talk this topic of internal financial controls, a few glimpses of what has been happening. First of all, if you really see work from home, Many of us who never even thought about working from home, we have been forced to work from home. And uh, there are still a couple of us who never really had anything to do ourselves with engaging so much of time on the laptops. Now we are almost spending God knows how many hours per day on our uh, home Wi-Fi, laptops and everything. In fact, we never thought that we'd be able to do audit remotely. 
i think we are coming in terms to that to say yes we can audit remotely but that also kind of hints at the possibility of saying okay where are we going in the future will we stay like this what is going to happen to the audit profession because if you really look at many organizations they have not started uh, opening their offices yet in many part of the country except a few places and uh, obviously we know how the pandemic is we still don't have a cure so it's kind of still we don't know where we are going in a way but that's exactly where imagine if this it did not work for us in terms of work from home whatever is the economy that has performed in the last couple of day a couple of months even that wouldn't have happened i am sure all of you us will agree not only that thanks to the the initiatives taken by the government earlier in terms of e filings and uh, automating almost the assessments and everything that's really paying off in a way now because otherwise imagine if uh, starting from very simple things like bank payments and going up to meetings that you have with your uh, you know client client board or whatever i think all that would have been uh, a distant dream for many of us um but at the same time uh, you know that like any other good thing technology is also a double edged double edged sword so you have on the one side good things which we can keep on talking but mind you uh, this is the time when hackers have been extremely extremely active because this is the time when they know that people are emotionally disturbed people will anyway get on to work from home and work from home systems are not necessarily secure so this is the time for hackers to really you know make their business good so that's what they have been doing very well and uh, we have often been hearing about this you know important element that even as part of our lfir in the banks we comment saying that does the bank have a business continuity plan and disaster recovery plan and has it been tested and generally you know most of us we say that we don't know it's nothing at the branch it is handled at the head office but then i think this has been truly testing times for this controlled called as bcp business continuity planning because for the first time if you see businesses which have never been shut in the history of mankind have got shut and uh, stock exchanges or whatever you may name there has been significant amount of disruption banks completely shutting down so there is a whole lot of things which have happened which were never never before never even imagined that they could fail of course uh, many opportunities have been lost uh, especially those who could not get on to the digital side of things so i think there's a kind of very clear warning by mother nature to say you better get digital otherwise your future is not really here because uh, whether it be whatever but i think another pandemic if we do not know how to handle that i think our lives would be in great kind of jeopardy and um, the surprising thing is that uh, the audit committees of even large companies the technology risk committees wherein all this is regulated by law in the insurance sector in the banking sector in the security uh, trading sector nowhere could they see such a kind of mammoth disruption coming they had not even thought about it but the fact remains i am sure many of us would have read that about 100 years ago there was a similar pandemic only thing is there was not not much of technology at that time so it didn't really matter but then it did cause a significant amount of disruption including in our country where i believe we had lost lot of people to that pandemic well one of the key things that we often talk about in organizations especially large organizations is something called as the risk register now for those of you who may not have heard about the risk register there's nothing to worry about it it is a very simple thing that we indians do very well we are very good at risk assessment and risk management by our dna only thing is some somehow we don't land up doing for our profession i don't know why but then if you really see you put us in any situation any trying situation we know how to get out of that the risk register is that document which clearly identifies each and every aspect that is important for running your business and says what can go wrong and what do we need to do about it so that things don't go wrong or even if things go wrong how we get back to business at the earliest so that is what is called as a risk register you can imagine we'll have a, a simple excel sheet 
which will keep on you know identifying all these risks and saying okay uh, this this is what can go wrong and this is you know what is the risk behind it and this is what we need to do about it is it really critical for business is it worth spending time and money on that so that's exactly what a risk register is but unfortunate that uh, uh, as we are looking at more and more of technology if some of you i am sure who are engaged in enterprise risk management audits or ifc audits you would have seen that very seldom do you find technology risks been very clearly given as part of your risk register take a very simple thing like using whatsapp for business if you really look at it there is so much of data that is exchanged on whatsapp across businesses of any kind whether it is small big or whatever but do, does anybody even think twice to say where is that data going do i have control over that data you know approvals are given on whatsapp in business situations so we really really don't think about all that even though that's part of a very fundamental internal control and it can impact significant decisions because somebody would say well we just got a whatsapp approval and that is how you know everything get into the accounts if the auditor asks where is the approval so you could have trouble around that so there has been i think a very scant respect for technology risk unfortunately and i think this pandemic is a time wherein it has really exposed all that and when it comes to cyber security which is gaining more and more attention of the auditors of course the world as such and we as consumers of this technology we are seeing newer and newer kinds of risk government suddenly coming out and saying don't use this app right we never imagined such kind of things earlier right so we are coming to kind of newer kind of risk the question is as control professionals what is it that we are doing in terms of helping organizations and building our capability and building our practice on areas which are the need of the time so that is where i think we should kind of look at as we go to step through this session of course the honestly speaking all these ifc should have got whatever is happening now if it was done very robustly unfortunately did not even the largest organizations failed then comes a big role of asking the auditor to say okay when you evaluated the ifc which the organization is produced to you or when you looked at your signing off your uh, accounts as a statutory auditor or as an internal auditor looking at an opinion on controls how much of technology risks which are integrated i am not talking here about core technical controls no we are talking about simple things which are essential for your business whether that that was considered whether the organization is considered or not not to blame anybody but we somehow did not really go through many of that because it was not in our reckoning if the world itself has failed to take notice of something like a pandemic so i don't think we, there is much reason to blame ourselves on this but look at how well the other side of human mankind has been the cyber criminals they have been extremely extremely active and they have found a umpteen number of business op opportunities and simply capitalized on that if you look at this this is google's uh, assessment by july google had estimated there are about 18 million scam mails only on the theme of covid 19 please understand so which means somebody sends you a, a, a link saying that a secret solution to covid 19 click here and since most of us are disturbed somebody would go and click on it you can imagine that completely unleashes a virus in the organization systems and it completes the eats up the entire network in fact there has been 667% increase in spear phishing attacks now what is a spear phishing attack very simple think like a criminal if you wanted to attack somebody's email id in the organization which is the most profitable id obviously of somebody who has authority powers to authorize approve payments that will be the most attractive guy for me so if i tap into his email box which is very easy to do believe me none of our email box is really very secure except of course some of them which you put on the google and all they are reasonably secure but generally when we go through you know many of the local mail servers and all, nothing is secure you can very easily get into most of that mail and you can actually read the mails and you can create a id which looks like the organization id and request this person for a payment and get the payment to your account this has happened in several cases in fact couple of years back the oil and natural gas commission lost almost about 175 crores because of a what is called as a phishing mail 
So a spear phishing mail is you target a person and send it. So this has increased like anything, and that is where you know because people are everywhere. They are not in the organization for the first time. Many of the employees are using. uh you know uh, their own system so this has caused a tremendous amount of opportunity for the hackers to really do this for example let us say there is a procurement guy who is working from home this uh, hacker will simply send him a mail saying that you know uh, managing director has approved to procure from this abc company now actually that's a fake mail and the person believes trust that and triggers the payment because it is apparently coming from an md's uh, email id but that is where the risks are which we look at actually are business risks and actually are a failure of internal controls because these are very very known kind of technology risks which have brought down complete businesses in many organizations so uh, of course we saw how many fake this covid charity sites were up you get whatsapp saying that there's some picture or somebody on a facebook to say very poor person suffering from ventilator this that he needs help immediately and we are very kind hearted so we say okay let me come some 1000 rupees what is a great deal actually we know that it doesn't go there but actually goes to a hacker and there is a you know this this season we all have been extremely curious to you know closely track the statistics of covid how many affected of course now we have lost the charm but earlier we were all very anxious to say okay how many cases in my region what is happening where how is it growing how many people died so this has been something we have been always looking for such kind of analysis and that is where also one of the areas where the hackers have been um, really you know going ahead with so of course whatsapp kinds and many fake mask supplies were in many many organization lost money by paying advances because mask was in so much of short supply end points as i said i been the target because for the first time if you see how people are working from home very few organizations gave their organization given laptop which is completely secure to their employees to work from home in many cases they have worked either from their own devices personal devices which is called as byod bring your own device but then we have to understand when it is my device you have no control to completely shut down what i am doing on my device so there there are a lot of risks when you work with sensitive data on to the end point so the question is were all these covered as part of the what is called as a attack surface and did we really look at this in the context of financial systems releasing any kind of property in the organization whether it be stock or whether it be anything to see if it was compromised or not so um, in fact best of best organizations one of the most noted it majors in the world in fact the name is very much in the press cognizant they were attacked and mind you Pagnison had one of the best uh, security and internal controls as regards their IT, but it was unfortunate that their email servers were taken over by a ransomware attack. And I am sure uh, all of us know what is ransomware. If we don't know, we better know because that is the most dangerous kind of attack in IT. What it will do is very simple. You click on any link, it will look like a, a regulatory notice in PDF, and that will unleash a small uh malware on your system and completely take over your system and shut down your system and unless you pay a ransom you cannot access that so many many organizations have suffered significantly because of this in fact one of the largest nbfcs which is owned by one of the largest banks their entire customer database was locked and they had to pay a ransom which was the wrong thing to do but they didn't know what to do because uh, Uh, they said we had only tried it because unfortunate thing both their primary server and the backup server both were locked because of a very stupid internal control they had continuously kept both of the system connected always so what happened when the when the malware the ransomware struck the production or the primary server it immediately copied itself onto the backup server so it completely kind of put off this entire thing so it was a very very simple common sense mistake Uh, which led to the entire organization could have been jeopardy their good luck that the hackers uh, were prepared to release the password uh, or the key uh, to open that otherwise they would have been very very deep trouble so uh, please understand that the hacker is always targeting human weaknesses like anxiety curiosity paranoia ignorance and indiscipline the hacker loves our indiscipline 
he knows that we don't follow sops he knows that we will not back up our systems he knows that there will be a lot of us who don't change our passwords or use very simple passwords he also knows that on the facebook we can find the entire profile of any of the persons and that is enough for him to launch an attack so it is in discipline that is where the need for the ifcs comes in more and more uh, prominently as such of course there have been lot of um, examples which can go on taking now let us get into specific case studies if we can because this is something which will be very interesting uh, how technology risks impact the financials of a company and this is i taken a cyber security case so that we understand why as auditors as statutory auditors as financial auditors we need to be mindful of cyber security we cannot steer clear of that let us look at it now this is the case of cosmos bank i am not sure how many of you have followed this case which was uh, in 2018 and there was a significant amount of uh, attack which happened first of all please understand this cosmos bank is a 113 year old cooperative bank it is a society and uh, they have been one of the very prominent highly profitable banks and they have been doing exceedingly well in maharashtra what happened in this case was there was series of loopholes i don't want to confuse you with technical jargons but simply what the hackers did they were able to deceive these guys first like a good hacker group what they did they were their tools which is a malware was sitting inside the bank systems for almost 6 to 8 months simply lying quietly watching each and every transaction that is going across and this malware which was not really a malware but simply a software which was looking for like a dictionary software looking for words like uh, payment or password or whatever and it was trying to copy itself onto every system in the network and it was trying to identify significant systems like the atm core switch or the you know the swift system etc etc and the hacker quietly understood what the financial transactions were being driven and mind you in this case they took over the entire atm control switch please understand when you you and me go and withdraw money once you put in your card you put in your pin number you say this is the money i want it goes to a switch server it is that is where the copy of the your customer ledger is maintained that shows the balance of what is what you are having right so it's a very simple internal control vis a vis bookkeeping control so when you want money there is an authorization which happens within that code please understand it goes to that server sees whether you have the balance and instructs the mechanism of the atm to deliver the cash please understand how many internal controls are there right across in this each of them has to work perfectly without failure otherwise either you don't get the money or somebody else gets the money so in this case what they did was they completely replaced the core switch which is the command and control for all the atms with a duplicate switch which they created now don't get uh, confused by the word switch it is just a computer right what they did was that software was installed by them wherein they created a fake uh, software now the software was in the control of the hackers and the, this particular software will create card number automatically and simply at a particular point in time believe me the hacker and their accomplices wherever they insert the card in any of those atms within the slotted time it will release cash because even though they have no account in the bank because very simple it only looks for whether the card is there if this card is there and this particular uh, place release money that's all so if there is money in that particular atm money will get released you won't believe there within a matter of hours there were 2849 domestic transactions 12000 international transactions using 450 duplicate cards fake cards 80 crores worth of cash was withdrawn believe me across 28 countries so you can imagine what kind of network or what kind of enemy we are actually working against so we cannot in fact uh, when this you know icci song was going on ya yesu shukteshu jagrutim honestly we have to be completely awake we have no right to sleep today that's where unfortunately it is because these hackers are ever active and they are trying to look at 
any loophole in the system and mind you if our ifc is not as robust clear damage in terms of financial worth is impending you have no choice so if it's seen this case this bank lost 94 crores of rupees okay within a matter of just 5 days okay the entire banks 113 year old banks it shook the confidence of the entire banking industry why silly mistakes which are done across various parts of the environment which has a very very simple internal control issues which failed please see this slide shows the chairman statement which is annexed to the audited accounts for the next year i will just read it for you it is very interesting you must read it this is coming from the chairman statement annexed to the audited financial accounts okay it's it says it's in fact this is the opening paragraph in its history of 113 years the bank faced the most acrimonious incident of cyber attack in which we had to incur net loss of close to 100 crores okay and of course it says what dates were uh, attack please see here we are talking about core technology being mentioned here switch of the atm payment gateway system and swift payment gateway were consecutively hacked and compromised by the hackers please understand both these systems are part of the core financial network right so it is very important for us to understand every system that has to do anything with the financial part please see the next one this is very interesting as per guidelines of rbi your bank will not be able to distribute dividend unless the entire amount of amount lost due to cyber attack is provided for and hence dividend for this particular financial year has not been recommended so you can see technology internal controls what kind of impact it has with regard to the financials of an enterprise further this is also coming from the audited financial uh, accounts okay the cyber attack and restoration of payment systems back to normal see caused an impact on the customers and their transactions here i will stop to draw the difference between ifc and icfr these are two words or two important controls which are enshrined in the companies act so one please understand ifc or internal financial control by definition within the proviso very clearly 134 of the companies act clearly points to not only financial controls but also operational controls what is an operational control for example how does for example inventory management happen okay so that is an operational control how does marketing function do how do they capture the details of the customers how do they make them customers so these are some of these examples as such right but that is why if you see the companies act 2013 rightfully enlarged it from just mere icfr to ifc what is icfr it is clear as the word goes internal controls over financial reporting which means these controls are specific to financial reporting right so ifc includes internal controls over financial reporting please see the damage wherein operational controls failed bank faced premature withdrawal of time deposits of approximately 500 crores savings deposits amounting to 415 crores and lost 3.7 crores from card uh, card commission due to the cyber incident so i think there cannot be better example to highlight how there is a direct impact not only in terms of the money worth but also loss of customers and the business which has been completely completely kind of shaken the bank of course they had to provide for 50% of the uh, 100 crores in december 18 and uh, subsequently uh, in the next year please see this how this is provided for in the accounts so you see the schedule to the profit and loss account and the other expenditure unfortunate any bank would really have a heart rending to see such a kind of entry there provision for cyber attack okay so you can see the 50 crores being written off there and of course the notes to the account uh, elaborates on uh, uh, so please see as a statutory auditor where our responsibilities come with regard to what we are mentioning the notes to accounts because which means that is the kind of awareness and expertise we are now required of if we are going to be auditor of such an enterprise right 
please see the emphasis of matter here very clearly pointing out that there was a cyber attack and drawing the attention towards that please see this not only that in the very uh, board report the chairman statement they are very clearly articulating what is the requirement under ifc of course just one mention this particular bank is only a society the provisions of the companies act do not directly apply however with regard to any of this the internal controls do apply because that is part and parcel of the way that we are going about saying that adequate internal controls have been there as part of our report please see this this is what the bank has mentioned as action taken by them email security strengthened please understand email security impacts every business not just a bank so i already told you the kind of frauds that happen atm and swift security is strengthened of course they are given specific technical details i i would encourage you to read the report to see you know what level of depth is required for an auditor to go into with regard to technology and ifc creation of multi layer network and segregation of networks this is like all of us in the family were living uh, in an apartment in just one room okay everybody access to everybody else's now you only you are now segregating all those networks to say okay we will not do this we will not do that etc etc right so the bank put in additional controls controls to prevent lateral movement of the attackers when the attacker came in 9 months what he was doing in the system he was moving from one system targeting email entering into the system getting on to the desktop looking uh, spreading across that department trying to find out what all is there then again going to other systems trying to discover for example that is how they identified the atm switch they identified the swift network core system and they were able to do different kind of attacks they were planning their attack stage by stage by stage and the fundamental internal control that was missing is which we call as the detective control there was not adequate detective control for 7 months or 8 months a hacker is sitting inside the system when i say hacker his tool is sitting inside the system and it is running network calls right across and nobody knows what's happening right then endpoint security of course which is where the somebody clicked on that and uh, the phishing mail was delivered that is what was the starting point if you really see for this entire episode and uh, look at you know uh, the what the key audit matters that have been brought out as part of the uh, audit report you, you please see this wherein it is as it has been identified that it systems and controls as a key audit matter because of the level of process automation large volume of automated transaction level of cyber security established by the management and the complexity of it architecture in the bank look at the auditor's response in fact if you really look at it, it looks like a system audit report to a great level but mind you it's a statutory financial audit report but the point is if you look at the second paragraph we have obtained a detailed understanding of the general controls which includes evaluation of banks control over evaluating uh, uh, evaluate granting access segregation of duty a uh, new user creation etc etc and it also talks about that they have employed competent people to uh, do whatever was necessary as such so that is one um, you know the the last two slides if you see is where you are looking at the city union bank attack right wherein it is a company and it's a company under the company law uh, law where it applies with regard to ifc and all the related matters right now let us look at the compliance needs as i said you know the section 134 very clearly casts the responsibility on the board this is a very important section for all of us to understand because whatever aspect you take here from that example when you say adequate internal financial control traditionally it is normal for us to look at three way checking okay whether the po is there and whether uh, the uh, material has been supplied and whether uh, uh, the payment has been accordingly made but please understand all these checks and balances including the authority for release of any um, you know resource is all completely embedded into the application architecture for example in a bank when you are doing a cbs audit today you won't find the authorizations outside the system everything is within the system but the fundamental question is the person who has authorized a does he have authority to authorize b does the person who has authorized have adequate powers and within financial limits with regard to that authorization so questions like this start coming up so 
if you see how it has been very clearly defined as part of the requirements is a of course the board is responsible for ensuring implementation of adequate internal financial controls so as i said in an internal financial control we will we'll look at what is that it later but we are looking at a combination of several controls which needs to be in place we'll go to the next and then i'll come back and explain see adherence to policies and procedures of the company right now many of us don't even look at what is it policy of the company we don't look at what is the cyber security policy of the company we don't even look at saying that okay how much of external it is being used when i say external it a simple thing like the bank payment being made for a gst payment please understand that is a critical control in a company because that is generally held by a staff or couple of staff in the team but don't you think that's a very important power that the person has with regard to delegation of authority matrix to identify whether he has the power to do that so these are important things similarly the use of digital signatures i mean it is it is a very normal practice that uh, we chartered one as the company secretaries everybody handles this digital signature of the clients which is reducing now but please understand all of us need to be very clear to understand it is a crime under law the information technology act clearly provides for prosecution if we are using anybody else's private key for signing and generally you know it's very easy when you really look at all this uh, the way that digital signature operates even if let us say the director has it he will ask the password what is it and it's a standard password 123456 okay so this is very very dangerous because when you affix this signature on any document right it is like forging a signature if the person is not doing it himself of course the person is required to change the private key immediately on receipt of the digital signature token which never happens unfortunately because they are afraid they'll forget it so across everybody whatever the vendor gives that is what is retained which everybody knows is 123456 or abcd 1234 or whatever so this is very dangerous so that is where it is important we understand what are the risks under like this it is like we are permitting forging of that signature of that particular individual who has the authority under the board for applying signatures to certain documents which is a obviously a you know an offense look at the next one orderly and efficient conduct of its business safeguarding company's assets so uh, one example of course already given you look at the stock release if you see in between in uh, there was a lot of fraud which was happening in flipkart and uh, amazon and all these kind of places wherein um you know that uh, you order for something and you will not get it delivered uh, you will get some stones delivered or whatever right so again it's a clear case wherein in a, in a completely automated transaction but involving hops with regard to physical items being delivered there has not been adequate internal financial controls beyond the organization boundary please understand when you get that stuff whatever you ordered on any of these market exchanges it actually comes from a vendor or a dealer who is not part of the company but please understand whom will you catch hold of obviously the market exchange so unfortunately another big problem that generally happens is we do not look at controls which are critically dependent on other third parties so that is again a very important aspect with regard to the efficient conduct of its business then prevention and detection of frauds for accuracy and completeness of the accounting records and timely preparation of reliable financial statements in fact prevention and detection of frauds has been specifically included if you see a couple of years back uh, uh, in uh, these re requirements but if you see it uh, clearly calls for the auditor to keep an eye on what is called as fraud risk management and mind you every organization today is a possible victim for any kind of either or employees within the organization who can do some mischief using their it or people who are outside the organization which could be hackers or anybody who can cause this kind of mischief so the question is as it goes the saying out of sight is out of mind unless and until as part of the flow of the transaction we have understood that there is a part of the flow which is critical to the revenue of the organization going outside the organization and everything happens through electronic networks and application software we will not even apply our mind to say okay this is something i should consider so that is where the importance of 
these aspects come in of course the last but not the least is the internal controls over financial reporting with the, which actually takes care of a accuracy b completeness of accounting records and c timely preparation of reliable financial information today any organization if your financial accounting software whether it be tally or it could be a core banking system if that is not doing what it should be doing as per the accounting principles or the internal control principles we could obviously land up with a financial statement which is completely completely not a true and fair view so that is where the importance really comes in are we as statutory auditors adequately evaluating the foundation of where these figures are coming from because like in the traditional environment we will do a vouching but today we know that the vouching really doesn't matter because what transactions come within the system and the way it is recorded who authorizes it that really matters if it is not automated then it's a different thing but if it is generally automated we need to obviously take cognizance of that of course as we know that the auditors have a huge responsibility to evaluate and give their opinion on the internal financial controls now there are several several requirements as regards internal financial controls i am not going to go into the depth of each of them because that will that itself will take a whole session and we will not be able to complete one important aspect which i want to actually highlight but some of them deserve important mention please look at the responsibilities cast on the audit committee it is their job to also ensure that there there are adequate internal control systems and they are the key point of contact for the auditors both internal auditors and statutory auditors to keep them appraised of the state of the or what is called as a the risk posture of the organization so if any frauds are there and whatever weaknesses are there what is the management doing about it all that is very much there and we also know that as part of the ceo cfo certification there are very clear responsibilities cast on them to not only say that they have put in a uh, internal controls or financial reporting but also confirm that they have evaluated it and that is where if you see there is a huge opportunity for auditors on two sides one as ifc management assurance professionals which means you are helping the management with their job which is the second line in this if you see a firm having evaluated their effectiveness operation and help them to demonstrate to the auditors that they have done what is necessary the second part if you see goes to the audit side so the auditors themselves have the responsibility to independently evaluate this uh, the icfr and satisfy themselves that the controls are working perfectly and are adequate right so this is where if you see the requirement of disclosure to the audit committee etc comes in all this as i said today misses out technology in most of the cases is what we have seen so when we say how do we really go about doing that there are two keywords which we need to understand with regard to ifc which is application controls and it general controls we will see what they are okay um i will stop here for any questions i don't know if we have the luxury of asking questions or one of you may pick up the questions because otherwise it will become a monologue if there are any questions or any thoughts to I share think, i think we will have a pause for question yeah anybody who is interested in this area who want any elaboration am i going too fast or too complex or is it understandable or you want it's understandable it? it's understandable it is understandable okay thank you so shall we proceed yeah yeah okay please go please, ahead, please do feel free to stop me if in case yes. you know something is not clear of course i'll be giving my email id and everything so that we'll be in touch you can any time ask any questions later on okay yes. what is internal financial control now i already explained it but let us elaborate into three aspects see as i said this is all coming out of the law itself so there are three parts to what we call as internal financial controls one like a very simple thing like maker checker controls double entry bookkeeping system or whatever bookkeeping system is being followed the accounting standards are being followed all that comes in as part of the first aspect which is internal controls over financial reporting which means there is a system by which there are authorizations maker checker controls etc 
which is devised as part of the policy and procedure of the organization then comes operational controls so as i said these are controls which are not immediately directly relevant to financial reporting but they do have an indirect or sometimes even a larger impact with regard to the operational areas for example you are looking at sales management system you looking at purchase management system or material management system then hr then uh, sales and distribution function so you can various you can have various functions let us please understand can you tell me even one department with your client wherein there is no it in any of these departments if is a reasonably large sizes enterprise even a smaller enterprise today they depend upon system in fact you will be surprised that some of the i have seen that some of the small uh, businesses they are so they are so adept at using whatsapp they use email of course they use several of these uh, to do team communication how they relate to uh, various aspects so uh, that itself is a very important aspect of the uh, uh, controls then last but not the least as i already said is the fraud prevention um, control which includes fraud risk management and making sure that somebody will not I mean we already saw in the last two years the kind of huge scams and frauds that have been unearthed in some of the largest and most respected organizations and uh, obviously somewhere the fraud risk management has failed so in summation the internal financial control is a combination of internal controls over financial reporting operational controls and fraud prevention controls now moving on what is the easiest way because i always get this question can you give me what is this internal control how do we define it actually you can define it to say there should be policies procedures controls which are implemented and then they should be ensured that they are running properly but one of the best things is to learn from nature which i think mr arikrishan also pointed out somewhere look at these honey bees don't you think that's an engineering marvel that they build a nest exactly of the same dimension every time right and mind you these are such small creatures compared to us the way that they collect what their food or whatever right and the way that they go about the entire thing is so disciplined so very well organized right across if we were to say what is a robust internal financial control system i think we should learn from you know these honey bees right so because it's a very clear example they have a policy they follow that discipline they know who is to do what roles and responsibilities are very clearly defined if you see within a honeycomb i think you will understand that there are worker bees there is queen bee there are some other uh, uh, you know uh, supervisory bees and all so there is a very very clear role definition they are very clear tasks cut out and what they produce is absolutely amazing and absolutely an engineering marvel if you see and of course we human beings uh, we simply just take this and uh, eat it so we are the hackers there you know all their hard work is gone there so um, i think that is where we need to learn from now let us look at in an organization how this works if we see as statutory auditors or as internal auditors if you see in the top of this layer you see financial statements statutory reports and mis reports our focus generally is only here and that we evaluate using the next layer which is accounting financial reporting applications of course nowadays we do the audit through the system most of the cases hopefully so you are looking at those controls but do we evaluate the internal controls is the question do we evaluate for example in most cases if you see even in tally there will be only one user or two users which is used by everybody everybody has admin access right so these are significant issues because till things go well they seem to never go wrong one things go wrong they will never become well again so this could be the situation as we have already seen during this pandemic times if we don't follow the discipline we are really paying a very heavy price for all this so similarly in an organization if you really look at it where after all the gl the general ledger that we are so used to or the cash book the day book the trial balance is doesn't exist by itself it exists because there is a sales process purchase process e-commerce inventory whatever you want to say and each of them there is an application software either an erp or it could be different different software or a combination of various software all that is what is achieving the business workflow and from there 
the financial start hitting the next layer which is the accounting and the financial systems and that is where it flows into the financial statements the statutory reports the mis reports etc but the question again remains how do we know because we are blindly trusting whatever is going on in these systems how do we know that this technology is doing what it should be doing for example if you go down to the bottom which is where for us it is a very difficult area it infrastructure database systems you know system software network servers nodes we can ask the question is it something relevant to the auditor obviously the answer you will guess clearly is most of the attacks that happen even in the case where we saw that earlier in the bank is called as something called as admin attack please understand the person who is an administrator access at that layer it is like the foundation of a multi story building once he gets access there he can create his access right across the layers please understand so imagine such an important control which we must see as part of what is called as the it general control testing right so broadly that is how if you see the first three layers where the business information and the business rules are being implemented is what is called as the application layer or obviously things like tally things like your mobile banking application internet banking application or your e filing software everything comes within this application controls and once you are able to understand if the logic is working fine for example we have seen in several cases in an nbfc the maximum uh, the minimum permitted rate for a loan is 14% but a particular set of people have been given at 11% nobody noted it it went into the uh, accounts as well and the amount was significant now where was the problem because somebody had the access to that what is called as the interest rate parameter and he went and changed this and he changed this back again later on wherein the fraud did not be found out unless and until the auditor did an evaluation of the application parameter controls so i am sure we also do this as part of our bank audits many of us so it's very important that these are items which have direct bearing on what we call as icfr internal controls over financial reporting and of course then you have the it general controls whether you are taking a backup or not please understand if there is no backup for example the case of the nbfc that i mentioned at the beginning if there is no backup no dr no disaster recovery do you think it will be a going concern it will not be going concern right which means what is the audit report you will issue it will be a disclaimer report because it is not a going concern at all after that because they don't have the data anywhere so it can be as serious as that so that is where we we have to understand this technology bit actually is very very significant with regard to the work that we do so in this it is to more easily understand i put a bank situation here it is the same thing like the previous slide only thing is if you see we have to evaluate both these category of controls which is the application controls and the it general controls and that is where we are looking at the accounts and that is where we are forming an opinion on please understand right so there are two aspects of our opinions basis one of course our examination of the controls the transactions etc but also fundamental is the internal controls for financial reporting and internal financial controls which together help us to form the opinion right okay now i will quickly just take you through some of the overall steps of how to approach um there are some steps which each of us has to follow now depends upon what kind of entities you audit now generally what happens is many of us deal with small clients so generally you know the ifc doesn't really get so much of attention right but believe me today there is because of the digital itself we auditors can act as catalysts for our client wherein they can see the growth multiple times within no matter of time provided they have a robust business strategy and internal control system so actually speaking with many of the compliance opportunities dying down for auditors 
and many of the clients only looking upon us as more of compliance professionals there is a tremendous opportunity wherein if we get a grip on the ifc we can become truly business strategy consultants to many of these enterprises because believe me many of these enterprises hold lot of promise they got very good business acumen but they don't know how to expand they are afraid to expand because they will lose control internal financial controls is the answer to that and that is where it also helps not just in terms of financial but also operational controls so how do we look at it first as auditors we know if you take the um, uh, the essays that the institute has issued there are several essays like uh, essay number 200 essays essay number 315 essay 230 essay 320 wherein it clearly tells you how to go about your job so i am not doing anything different here in fact i am sure you know that we have a guidance note on internal financial controls from the institute which is very comprehensive it has been also revised recently right so you will find most of the steps of whatever very brief overview that i am giving here if somebody is interested to really go through that i would urge you to go through that because with the digital opening up as auditors the world is our playground you can actually help any entity which is in us or europe or africa with the international control consulting because mind you we indian chartered accountants are held in high esteem for our competence and capability so if we specialize in this space we know that we cannot go to compliance practice for them that is not a immediate possibility but one thing is very possible is ifc practice which is a requirement across the globe of any government that enforces corporate governance so you will find that's a huge practice so let us use this not merely from a mere financial audit perspective but from looking at the opportunity to expand our practice let us see this first step always is unless you understand the business you cannot audit it you cannot audit what you do not know tomorrow morning flipkart comes and tells you please take up my audit statutory audit how many of us are competent to say we will be able to evaluate their internal financial controls unless and until you are confident about how technology works and mind you this is not technology within one organization flipkart or any of these amazon is a conglomerate of various partners who work together wherein their balance sheet profit and loss account actually comes right so which means unless and until we understand the entire ecosystem and what really happens in this business we will be lost so that is why any ifc approach the first step is context first what is the business of this organization how does this business run then look at what is the extension extent of automation of the various processes what regulations apply to them whether it is gst or fema or listed company sebi requirements or whatever only if we understand the first two we can go to the third right so the extent of automation is very important because you will find lot of surprises there in many cases because organizations may not have taken the right approach there will be lot of gaps in automation which will actually have a huge hidden risk for us when we are taking the audit of this enterprise and when i am saying audit please understand i am not talking here system audit i am saying this is the job as a financial auditor as a internal auditor or whatever right so the next step is going little bit into technology when i am saying don't get worried here you are simply tracing the path of the transaction and you have to ask the question okay from this application where does it go right for example once in an sap or a tally or whatever a list of all employee monthly salary payment is generated what do you do the person opens an internet banking uh, uh, corporate account right and in that login he uploads the employee data so what is the risk here very simple in between the time that the list is generated and by the time this is uploaded i can simply change the account destination number and my name there that's all job done so if it, if that simple control is missing we are looking at a very very huge risk of the organization so that is where 
application architecture which means when two application software talk to each other there should be no tampering possibility of tampering at all between that then of course to understand what is the type of technology being used you don't have to be a technology expert here you are simply trying to understand does it work on a mobile can it run from home or is it working on your organization controlled server very very simple things right then how many parties are involved who are whose software you are using outside the organization for example you have put your entire software on a saas right you know what is a saas which is like you know a, a, a google sheet let us say okay or uh, you can put it on anything which is online a software which is available online please understand once you are using google sheets the entire information entire control is with google is it not important for us to understand whether it is happening properly there it will be safe so i have given you a very simple example but depending upon the organization for example whatsapp itself is a third party and if you are if an organization is using free whatsapp please understand when you sign up for whatsapp the terms and conditions they give you no guarantee whatsoever all liability is yours all benefit is theirs that is how most of these terms and agreement uh, terms and conditions are structured unfortunately so that is where we have to be very very conscious to say are these risks in the consciousness of the organization or not then of course the next step once you have got the you know okay these are the application family members in the organization then you have to go down to what is called as the transaction walk through and that is where you will walk through which is nothing what is a walk through so don't think it is some great thing nothing you are just taking one identifying one sale transaction for example right from the order stage every step you are seeing how it is going through so you will find surprising that it may go through multiple software till it reaches the application uh, sorry the financial statement and before it reaches the financial statement in many cases everything comes into an excel sheet right now that excel sheet controls are extremely essential otherwise i can change anything there so this process walk through gives you that power of understanding through what all software is this going so that you will know which is risky which is not risky or less risky then draw up a risk and controls matrix now what is this complicated thing as it looks like it is a very simple thing as i said because in our audit we don't have the time to go through each and everything 100% so what is our logic we obviously do an audit risk analysis and say okay from our scope of work point of view which are the areas that are critical or high risk or very high risk to our work and those are the ones which we will take up and evaluate either using samples or otherwise so that is the reason when you take up an audit of an organization the first year you will generally do this entire ifc mapping which the organization will do we are required to verify that so as part of that you do a risk and controls matrix analysis and when you walk through there are three type of controls entity control process control it control i'll explain examples later on then our job is to test the design of control for example you ask them can anybody access in your organization without a password they will say no 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 everybody has to give password then you go and ask one fellow what is the kind of password you will have he will say my name is uh, ramraj my password is ram well you know what is the risk behind you passwords so we have to identify whether the design of controls is adequate for example as i told you earlier they are downloading the payment file either payment to vendors or payment to uh, salary uh, to the employees and that is then uploaded into another system so obviously that again is a design of control which is not good unless it is secured against right then also i told you about uh, who can change the interest rate in the software so there should be adequate segregation of duties and authorizations to be in place before we do that of course then the testing of operating effectiveness so one is to say like an sop these are the controls put in place by the organization the second aspect 
is to get into understanding are they really implemented and working because otherwise it has no meaning so that is where you are looking at now going into the ifc it side and trying to understand that so all that ultimately as i said if you are a statutory auditor it will be with regard to identifying what impacts our opinion where we where do you find any of the financial related aspects which could get impacted so that is where you do that i will be just skipping some slides in the interest of time because i see that we just have another about 20 odd minutes left so we'll just quickly just uh, skip through that i hope that is fine okay so context i already explained look at it like this this is a very simple diagram which will tell you how to look at the ifc if you see the top please understand you are understanding the business context you see the right hand side first two build, you know uh, images on the top which is what is the organization doing who are the stakeholders the shareholders or whosoever what is being promised to them right all that context to get there what is the business process is running in that organization if it is a manufacturing or nbfc or trading what is that business process is running but core if where things can go wrong is the central piece called as information because ultimately if you see as an auditor information is our raw material and unless and until we know that the information is correct we cannot proceed with giving an opinion on the state of that information whether that information is in the form of a pnl account or is in the form of notes to accounts or whatever it is let we have to understand that when it comes to our work as an external auditor we are looking at opining giving an opinion to say whether this particular set of new uh, whatever figures that are given to us and whatever way it is presented is true and fair or is it accurate etc etc but only thing we have to understand is today whether you go to a bank audit or whether you ask your client or whatever or a gst everybody has to be on this right so there is a system involved somewhere or the other and that is where the risk start coming in if you see the lower side you got this complex thing of application servers telecommunication etc etc but don't look at it like that look at it simply as information flowing through that and ask this question what can go wrong if this is not properly secured or this not properly configured right and that is where you'll get a very clear answer and that will impact back into the stakeholder interests <clears throat> so if you understood this cycle you would have understood how to go about it's very simple right then comes the next part okay you did a walk through now as i said you will want the client to prepare a list of all the applications and which are the applications which are in, like for example when you are doing icfr not every application is essential for your financial reporting right so you will mark that clearly to say okay these are applicable this is what i'll take samples in and test right and then you are looking at the inter interconnectedness for example some payroll software is there it might be connected to an attendance software so the actually the leave information or whatever is going to come from that attendance software when people are working from home how do they check attendance so these will be internal control questions that you will need to ask how is it adjusted how do you know that a person is in still in duty or left the organization during the covid times so these are again important things then they could have paid some medical claim for the person how is that that being done and suddenly you find travel expenses during pandemic you know there is something fishy there isn't it we are not obviously traveling during this time so you can very easily connect all this and mind you if you find the name of a person a user id which has authorized a transaction and that person's name is not there in the hr list it is fraud potential fraud right so that is where you have to start looking at such kind of controls because all this is linked up with one to another so the second aspect a uh, third aspect sorry is to draw up the risk and control matrix which i just explained broadly of course we we we'll look at a little bit of how to look at risk and control um i will not go into this in detail because this will take too much of our time but the top layer is what we are obligated as auditors to look at one basic compliance right two financial reporting which is what we do as 
reporting and compliance is what we do in terms of companies act and applicable regulations in terms of our external audit right operations and looking at strategy comes as part of internal audit management audit right but you see that each of this are actually basis which will help us to form if somebody is interested this is from a document called coso if you want some basic reading our guidance note from icai gives enough detail around that so you can read that or if you are very interested in reading this is more detail you simply google it coso erm framework you will get it coso erm framework now let me possibly rake up your brains a bit and ask you this question as an auditor which of this following and when i say as an auditor i am asking you in your role either as a financial auditor or internal auditor which of these following would you consider the most risky internal control lapse number 1 any erp or cbs backup is not up to date number 2 the mobile banking or any solution which is hosted with a vendor outside the bank number 3 in your organization or in the client's organization passwords are getting shared number 4 staff members do not attend security awareness training sessions number 5 the it and security policy is only put up for compliance nobody reads it okay because it is required by law somebody has created it number 7 uh, now office email is accessible on employees personal smartphones which means byod their own personal phone they can access office mail right then the organization is using a hr application without it being properly tested or what what we call as a user acceptance testing sign off now i would leave it to you to guess it was a proper live session i would have engaged with you but unfortunately in this kind of sessions one handicap is we it becomes monotonous after some time we don't have you know opportunities of interaction sir, sir we will have an interaction now okay sure okay anybody can ask questions and answer vital das sir in this aspect sure i'll be more than happy to answer question answers because otherwise we have, we have given unmute all unmute all and anybody can come forward are there no questions no questions varyatan sir no no questions means two things either everything i said is clear <laughs> yes yes i hope it is not the other one <laughs> so i think uh, maybe you should have a round of coffee and then we can have questions i'll complete the session <laughs> i know these sessions are very monologue i hate these virtual sessions because in all said and done we human beings are social animals we love to interact and networking is a very important part during a coffee you and me exchange something that is more interesting than the session itself isn't it yes yes sir uh, uh, in this question i go for passwords are shared yes sir ah you will go for passwords are shared madanavan <laughs> i will i will not generally give you the eligibility because you are a system audit man <laughs> okay anybody else yes please my name is george kurian from trivandrum yes, yes i just had a doubt yes sir if we are if we are the central auditors of a bank yes and we are supposed to check the swift system Yes. as it happened in neera modi case the, even the management was telling it's not an auditor's responsibility right and uh, uh, as an ordinary experienced auditor yeah. uh, chartered accountant we cannot do many of those tests without having a computer resource person in our team correct correct so that brings us to the point that many of this ifc controls yeah. have to have proper staffing with us or we have to insource that staff if we have to do that audit right. because i i see fr is not that straightforward in case of complicated clients like yes. mobile yes. 
telecom companies and uh, yeah. banks and there are, it's too much it dominant to be managing with uh, what you call walk through risk and control matrix and all those may fall short Correct. of type of risk we are facing in uh, you know materiality and yes. uh, truth and fairness Very in true. my view uh, your views are most welcome i think uh, mr george i must thank you for the brilliant question i think um, this is uh, very much something we have to know the answer because it's not it is not a plus b is equal to c the answer is not there and as you rightly said uh, the management tends to confuse us or they themselves are unclear so let me tell you how this is to be handled first of all we have to look at are we responsible because that's the first questions where we have to start to say is it within my scope of work so anything that impacts the financial statement like for example in this case it was uh, i'm i'm sorry i'll have to go into little bit of technical detail with regard to your sure, sure. you asked if you see in this case it was what is called as a non financial message in the swift system but it is a contingent liability because it creates a liability between two entities within the same entity so like the foreign by a branch created a position uh, which was created by this and they therefore uh, took that and used it to pledge with another bank and got got the line of credit so one thing is very clear it is a contingent liability which obviously is something which is part of our responsibility so the bank cannot tell us that this has nothing to do with you number 1 now having now confirmed that this is very much scope of our work it is too complicated for us because this system is very complicated so do does does it mean that i have to go and get all the expertise to uh, do it myself answer is not necessary first of all in any internal financial control the first primary responsibility is of the board of that particular entity and their management and their audit committee that is the first thing so they have to produce all the audit reports which are done by whatever experts in that field to the statutory auditor not only simply give the report if you see the responsibilities of the audit committee are very very clearly enshrined they have to bring to the statutory auditor the notice of what they feel will impact the financials of the organization so i think the 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 law is very clear on that to say that there is a significant responsibility amongst various stakeholders to bring or create transparency around system controls which are bearing on the internal financials uh, internal controls for financial reporting hence now the first point of our reliance would be to take those reports and study them ask necessary questions obviously in writing or recorded minutes and see that we get the right answer so there itself we are reasonably protecting ourselves because we have evaluated that we have evaluated what they are doing and at least started with the approach and saying yes this is fine but suppose we are going to find that something is very very really risky there will be responsibility on us to test it to some extent in which case in which case which means we are first reducing by understanding scope what is within our scope number 2 getting the advantage of how it has been done by the management uh, testing with regard to the ifc they giving us a very clear explanation and we probe we probe into what they are doing asking questions from our level of understanding from a financial point of view and saying tell me where all this will impact ask them to take us through that which we obviously our team will do that and then to say does do we feel that there is an impact on this or not so once we have narrowed on this next comes no we have to audit this like we do audit the um, uh, you know the various loan documents etc of the bank so like this we have to audit this particular transaction then obviously we we need to either have competence within our team but generally it is not possible because especially these systems are specialized systems so we the uh, institute guidelines allow us to hire the services of an expert professional expert it should be qualified and we telling them this is the outcome i want and i want you to tell me how this is working right if i can compare that i always take this example of gold loan are we experts in gold valuation honestly not but we know the principles and then we see that the value the appraiser is a person who knows the profession and then only 
we make use of the services of that appraiser to evaluate whether this gold is of whatever value that is stated and then therefore the impact on the security and the impact on exposure etc 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 so the same kind of principle has to be applied on these also while over time we will generally we can build up our expertise but if we are faced with this problem i don't have expertise you can very well go and hire an expert from outside only thing we have to ensure that they are certified professionals who are also bound by some code of conduct either the engineering side or whatever side so that we can rely upon their work so this is uh, i don't know if i answered your question sir i think you have answered it from a point of view of a statutory auditor but what happens many a time we are called in for fraud investigation and forensic and all particularly by companies which have faced fraud they'll call us in at that time if it is highly it dominant and electronic like the mobile telecom i had that experience with a bank i had that experience as a central auditor at all those times uh, we had to call in experts from That's india right. because yeah. i was in pwc and the pwc office used to give it so yes. we used to bring them in because yeah. we couldn't handle it beyond a level yeah that the reason it is as simple i would think as your traditional practice for example let us say tomorrow morning i am called by a, a, a securities trading firm to audit their uh, business and i don't know anything about securities trading i am not i would consider myself not competent for that particular job straight away so which means that i have to hire that expertise within me and then only i can take up that job provided i am able to manage the audit risk well so this is uh, is, is my right. submission it's a combination actually we we have to do our work we have to take our responsibility yes, but yes. we have to have appropriate resources to back us up Absolutely. so that jointly we can put a front to the client and give a responsible uh, report absolutely That's sir absolutely okay. thank you sir thank you and to just to respond to mr padmanabhan's answer well your answer is good but uh, the idea was to confuse everybody because everything has a risk there it is only high medium low or very high medium low so the risk control matrix is uh, based on the materiality with regard to each of this because while i have said passwords are shared i have not really said which system that would be a typical question that i know you will ask but in this session you <laughs> but the point is each of them has uh, has a risk for example the mobile banking solution being hosted uh, with the external guy is very risky the entire thing is with him he doesn't need password he has access to the compliant system so it is relative risk so what i am saying is there there is no black and white there are lot of shades of gray so that is where we have to kind of in fact goes back to what uh, cherian sir said is we have to see where the risk curve is for us and what is high risk is where we have to be need focus on the small item we leave it so uh, just to answer that question i think we have very few minutes left can we continue with the session uh, complete it or uh, you want to have more questions i'll be happy any questions i thank you for those questions both from uh, uh, mr cherry and mr padmanabh george 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 kurian uh, george kurian sorry sir it's okay so we'll continue yeah so uh, the point is it is relative now for a chartered accountant who has never seen a system audit or you know many of us we have i mean we don't know where to start the thumb rule is very simple i'll tell you see first of all we have to understand that what we are interested in everywhere is nothing but just the information right and with regard to attribute of information for us when we are statutory auditors we are most concerned about integrity of the information whether it is correct whether it is accurate whether it is complete whether it is compliant so that is what we are interested in but once you are looking at a banks level and also looking at internal audit for example i would also think confidentiality is important not only that if you look at icfr to ifc the privacy controls today because hackers are always running behind getting your database from the bank and they will hack you so confidentiality comes in as a very important tenet even from a financial perspective now so we may want to say that these internal controls are not adequate similarly availability unless today a system is available you are not able to do banking which means going concern problem 
so that is where we have to look at these three simple questions with regard to any complex technology and ask that what is at risk and once you understood what is at risk simply apply these three balloons on top okay how are you controlling this risk for example if anybody can see anybody can log into the software anybody can see anything then first thing should be you put a login password or multi factor authentication like otp or whatever that is an important internal control to ensure that only the authorized person will have access to that transaction capability which is nothing but a traditional principle only thing is the way you implement this control is changing again like in the traditional environment you need to have a process okay uh, when there is a handover of charge how will it happen how will this get changed when a particular technology is applied what should be configured for example can the person use the previous password or not can the person have uh, only alpha or numeric password or not so we can go into several of this so we have to refine the rule base have these rules configured into that software right that login password software it could be your operating system or whatever and make sure people are monitoring that it is because somebody needs to go and change the software who can do it can the customer himself do it he can't do it so you are setting up roles and responsibilities and segregation of duties around that so this is what i was saying even if you are getting confused with all these terminologies you simply stick to these questions you will get the answers everywhere believe me for me when i started my practice and i knew nothing about technology this common sense questions is what worked i am sure it will work for each of us so coming to the entity level controls process controls and it controls the same thing what i said entity level controls we are asking questions such as what is a board responsibility are they taking for example a strategy on internal controls and how it is protected is the risk matrix with regard to technology also signed off at the relevant senior management level so those kind of questions get captured in the entity level controls the process level controls as i said a simple thing like whether you can buy from a blacklisted vendor now in a manual environment a person is having a sop he controls that if it escapes we hold him accountable in a system there may a person may not be required because that person's job goes but the system itself can be programmed to implement saying if the list if the name of the vendor is in the blacklisted software list uh, back blacklisted vendor list do not proceed with the transaction so that is what an example of a process level control similarly application of discount what is the correct rate of discount to be applied application of tds application so all this if you see you simply imagine how you do it in tally all that is process control setting like when you say apply this gst rate on this kind profile of transaction is nothing but a process level control which are building into that software similarly taking a backup is also a process level control a uh, configuring access is also a process level control for example can anybody pick up a phone call and ask the it guy or it vendor to create his id it should not be possible you have maker checker controls otherwise it can expose the entire software to risk and last but not the least is it controls is application general controls which of course we will also see so we have to remember that we these are the goals that ifc must achieve from a compliance perspective accuracy completeness of accounting records so a wrong gst rate applied somewhere or an error in the software can cause a problem so it requires across the entire life cycle controls timely preparation of reliable financial statements suppose sometimes somebody has completely lost clue of such a complex worksheet and the formula somewhere got damaged i tell you it's a nightmare for the person you know especially large organization to come back to that so that's a very important control you must have prevention and detection of frauds and errors so the system it should there will be adequate detection controls and prevention controls that fraud should not happen for example a cashier is logging in from his home and putting across a cash transaction in a normal environment it should not be permitted if it is happening then the software itself should not allow that so that is an internal control which is built into that particular uh, system or software 
or for example a person is putting through a transaction at 3 am in the morning it should be suspicious how come this person is doing at this particular point in time so these are all various controls which you can put in for frauds and error control of course operational control safeguarding assets i already talked about lots what is the inventory control or cash control or whatever all that comes in within that and of course ensuring orderly and efficient conduct of business important it may look a very simple control but please see your experience as using the bank's mobile application software if there is error two times you will not trust that software right so you will rather go to the bank so this is very important that it is orderly and efficient so this is where our job is to evaluate two things adequacy of the control design which is on paper should have been recorded and signed off by respective stakeholders internal to the organization and b to do some tests for example if you want to test whether the software is calculating interest properly what do you do you simply take the inputs like the loan amount the interest rate the compounding uh, whether daily compounding monthly compounding or whatever and you separately use excel sheet to calculate that entire uh, term sheet and you check whether the software is also calculating so it's a black box technique if you can say but that will give you the assurance that this control is working effectively similarly for example in general controls they are telling you backup is taken daily automatically every day do you trust it you have to ask them show me at least once where you have restored the entire system from a backup alone and you can be even witness to that so that will give you a reasonable assurance yes the backups are achieving their purpose i am just keeping this slide for want of uh, time so th these are all uh, type of controls which uh, will help you to understand you know what is an entity level control what is policies and procedures what is a financial reporting control what is a technology control right um okay these are all again expanding on the same things uh entity level control for example the role of the board and governance in even choosing the right technology or the software right then policies procedures standards both for business rules to be embedded within application sir, software your slides are not visible sir oh oh okay i'll just check is it visible now yes Yes, yes. Yeah, I am not sure what you missed earlier. Mm. Okay, I'll I'll I go from here. So this is what I was explaining because this is all under uh, Section one thirty four requirement of the company law. So this is something we must do anyway, right? Uh, and that is where uh, if we follow the same approach, it will automatically achieve this. Uh, that is where it is. See, it is like building a house. First time when you are building your home, you have to work hard. but once you have, you know architecturally engineering principle wise built a proper home you have no worry for life <laughs> similarly when you take up a new audit first year there is always little bit of struggle and hard work which you have to do but believe me it will reduce your audit effort in the subsequent years by something like 30 to 70% easily because when you look at analytics what is analytics if you have data which is organized in proper format a simple excel sheet is enough for our statutory audit nothing more is required because it can do what do we do we do compare we do join we do uh, look up that's all we will do isn't it that is enough for us most of the controls of course you can build more complicated systems but to start with that's a very good place to start with so the availability of data can create such a promising uh, benefit for us in the future that we will be able to simply using that data churn it around the way that we want so that is where the idea is it has been see today we say ai data analytics all this has been we have been doing that for so many years actually speaking i don't know how many of you in my audit days there was called this 12 column sheet i don't know how many of you were even aware about that there used to be a a3 sheet big size with 12 columns we have to analyze all the gl uh, you know in that so that was nothing but a data analytics that we did only thing we did it manually we are doing it system that's it okay so um uh, so this is what i was explaining from an entity level play, please understand the tone at the top matters when you are dealing with a client 
if the client senior management gives importance to technology controls you can be rest assured that they will at least go about doing a decent job but to create that sensitivity and realization we auditors have to play a very critical role because generally we are in the rush of audit we don't have much time to talk to the client and tell them this is required more from a benefit perspective rather than merely compliance but if we invest that time during the year when it is not the audit time believe me an interim audit can significantly help in tuning up their system to help us as part of the audit so the board the governance the policy procedure standards so very important uh, as i said in it see whether it takes small organization or even large organization the it department is the most undisciplined department everybody will have admin access there that is the highest risk they trust those people that is different they will control the access for everybody in the organization but these it fellows who have nothing to do with it uh, uh, data they will be having complete access to everything which is very dangerous so we have to make sure we understand risks like this so organization structure roles and responsibilities with regard to all this have to be implemented with regard to our work whether it is statutory audit or internal audit then of course understanding automated controls see i tell you one thing which happens today everybody is running behind uh, artificial intelligence and um, machine learning let us please understand even when you draw a column during onam how you start with the dots is very important otherwise you land up in a mess of a column you agree i hope similarly with regard to any ai or ml if the principles and objectives are not clear you will do up you will you, some vendor will come he will do some nonsense which will be total useless i can guarantee you or something which can be done using an excel sheet and you you are paying the price of a spacecraft for that so this generally i have seen many organization get into this hype of ai ml so we have to be very careful with that ground level understanding of why i am doing this is very important rather than an organization saying we have started a an analytics project what they will do if you closely analyze is they will put all the sensitive transaction of the customer into that ai cloud everything is already there that fellow will analyze this entire thing is in the cloud it will get copied do god god knows whatever because the vendor is holding access to the cloud so these are mistakes which i have seen which many organizations do anyway that was slightly digressing so reporting i think mis reports always give us lot so we should insist on more and more of uh, mis reports based on the controls that we need okay of course uh, if you see down there are two type of controls preventive we know we cannot prevent everything so detective controls are very important for us to detect if something has gone wrong and um, as i said it is only from a log that will come to know whether some mischief is happening or not otherwise it doesn't get recorded anywhere your firewall firewall is like a watchman at the gate once he lets the traffic in he will not do anything beyond that so the log is very important for us which is what construct an audit trail which is we have been doing for ages the type of testing that we do where there is an automated control like an interest rate which is applied for all the loans in the bank we can take only one sample and if there is a change in the interest rate one in each period that is enough but where the control is not implemented as an automated control for example somebody takes a report from the system analyze does some test or filter and then passes the payment we have to take enough samples if it is manual obviously we have to follow that uh, traditional principles of sampling so in an organization please understand with regard to technology controls this is a very popular slide from instead of internal auditors there are three lines of defense and as part of our internal control internal finance uh, ifc evaluation we have to first to see whether these guys are doing their job properly or not with regard to ifc because for example in the head of the sales department it is his responsibility to check the access whatever has happened in the last one month and certify saying that all these access is authorized i'll tell you what happens in many finance departments for finalization they will give access to the previous year data it is never revoked this fellow will go and do a fraud there maybe he or somebody else who knows that so these are very simple things but which can create 
serious disaster for the organization so each of these lines are important for us as external auditors first they should confirm that they have evaluated all these controls the first line of defense which is the owner department sales purchase whatever right second line of defense the system audit department or the internal control department uh, sorry uh, the uh, financial control department or the uh, compliance department all of them have responsibilities and they are supposed to adhere to technology principles as much as we are required to then the internal audit department we have to look at the internal audit report in the point that uh, uh, mr korean raised was very valid the inspection department of the bank doesn't do a proper system audit which is first their responsibility had the concurrent audit done that uh, in the punjab national bank case that fraud would not have happened it was not within the scope of that which is a very sad thing unfortunately so the point is that we have to also see whether these controls are being taken care of by all these people first and the audit committee should be discussing on all these controls and they should be taking responsibility then comes our job to evaluate all this and form our independent opinion okay this is uh, i'm not going to details there are examples of various it general controls which you will find in many places so that's not but this is where when we are when we are talking to the client we have to make them realize that number 1 it bring ifc brings in discipline and discipline is fundamental to success and growth if the person is indisciplined it cannot happen so that is why if you see the first thing that comes in this is one of the surveys is almost 80% are saying it helps in streamlining standardizing controls and only on the basis of robust controls can an organization grow confidently the best example is general electric they grew from some small size to kind of such kind of business all because of good internal controls even today if you go on the internet you will find tremendous amount of case studies on ge second it enhances the governance framework it gives lot of visibility to the board it makes them take good decisions and they are able to depend upon data that is provided to them otherwise generally it is a last time rush that some person will give some data they make a decision on it only to find later on that the the data was bad it reduces leakages of frauds of course it enhances oversight of business operations because a dashboard will simply tell you whether all these fundamental things are taken care or not like what is called as a red green blue dashboard a red green yellow dashboard which is a very popular thing in most organizations anything red will attract the attention at that level they will take action on it otherwise we know things are going fine of course it is a system driven thing then defines clear accountability transparency which is very important the system side controls automation because in the biggest danger is if an organization is half automated because then they will have manual intervention everywhere and that's a big headache for us when we are doing the audit because we have to now spend time to take larger samples in those areas and keep on reconciling two systems it's a big tension un unwantedly okay then of course uh, um, uh, it just goes beyond uh, just compliance so um, of course test of design of controls test of operating effectiveness very simple you are seeing whether the policy is there whether the document is there whether the standard operating procedure is there whether the organization structure is there and then operating effectiveness whether for those transactions it is being applied or not for those automated controls whether it is applied or not and if you find there are exceptions you see whether it is material or not and you accordingly conclude so with this we are coming to the end of the session so if you see today where we are going we are looking at integrated autonomous systems across when we talk about blockchain and all believe me once blockchain comes in its full potential either it will kill audit if it is done or it will kill itself one of the two things will happen because it's not so easy to create a blockchain which will recognize each other blockchain so it is still i would think in experimental phases you can do it for certain parts of the organization but putting an entire organization especially a regulated organization blockchain is still not there because the question of trust is very much there but we will certainly have more and more of iot system for example in your car today you are going to look at internet car autonomous car and when you are driving your autonomous car there is no driving to do no so what will you do you will do shopping and what will you do shopping with you want to use your mobile your mobile will be fitted on to that particular device you will talk to the car like alexa and do shopping once you do that we are going to have a lot of headaches because this device which is moving about now 
has to be tracked right the internal financial control has to work perfectly because you are putting across shopping transactions on that so we are going to have a lot of headache on kyc all that in the future because now your car will become you have to do kyc for the car because the car will be recognized as a recognizable transaction entity in the system similarly we are looking at automated billing for electricity in many cases which is using latest kada technology all that is going to be a huge headache for us because the revenue comes from there so unless until we have internal controls of that revenue we don't know what's happening so these will be very interesting challenges what is called as autonomous system integrated systems and already in nsc and all we have this algorithmic trading and all which is a typical autonomous system in many ways then collaborative digital payments blockchain driven uh, dlts uh, distributed ledger systems and all which is which is already happening in many ways all experimental as of now then of course our challenge is to deal with organization like this marketplace this ola uber flipkart all this they exchange data within so many partners now when we are doing the external audit or internal audit of such an entity unless and until we understand the nuances of technology and internal control how it is working impossible because imagine the amount of data that they collect today even if you forget 5 years from down the line your ola or uber will tell you where all you have been up to how much time where did you spend all that has privacy angle and transaction angle both fraud angle everything can be done so these are all uh, things uh, which i think internal operational audits will they will increase in scope because there is so much of tension to be handled so there is lot of scope for such kind of audits a system audit of course security is going to be top of the charts certainly so especially this intelligent system self healing system all this is coming up this will all create a lot of tension because the entire process of correcting that issue is also built within the software like for example in your antivirus it will recognize the virus and kill it so which means it is detection and correction and if the wrong rule is applied it can delete your data so it is important to see that this is certified uh, properly as such then of course taxation advisory already if you see many of the big four they have built their own robotic platforms wherein it will you you only feed in the data and the accounts it will automatically do all the transfer pricing audits for you so for example in one of the big four they had a 50 member team uh, in uh, for transfer pricing now there are two people the entire thing is replaced by a software but the challenge also remains that all the internal financial controls internal controls are embedded in that software so it has to be sub continuously subject to audit okay and um, of course so what should we do as auditors i think uh, this ifc is a great area i would think for everybody to look at newer domains of practice uh, we we certainly need to look at where business is going and start aligning because suddenly things will change we don't know because i have seen very small enterprises startups which had no clue about it they have become very big today right a very simple example is dunzo they started their failures multiple failures but today they are so big government is hiring dunzo and swiggy to deliver so much of uh, this uh, uh, i was reading yesterday for the small vendors street street uh, uh, food vendors they are tied up with them so suddenly it it becomes very big and then imagine our auditor's job the big headache unless and until we understand system it's impossible to audit it right so tech risk based audit is what we need to look at identify business tech oriented audit goals aligned with business and control goals see we should not we should not lose control of the ground i have seen that many of them they start flying and they say oh ai ml ai ml rests on the same audit principles have not changed principles remain the same if those principles are violated this software or whatever you call is of no use whatsoever just a waste of time and money so it obviously today cannot be without system audit so that is what we call as integrated audits so slowly we have to see that we also start building our audit tooling when i say audit tooling please don't think it is some very fancy tool simple excel tools using macro you can build which are very powerful i can tell you that and uh, of course important to measure our audit performance because otherwise we can today with the kind of compliance requirements and uh, penalties that has put on auditors i think we have to be very careful in recording our work 
and generally one of the big pain points is how to maintain audit documentation it is better to get a good audit tool which will automatically record then transform audit culture and competencies we have to move forward there is no way and uh, continuous review of audit strategy improvement and communication the way that we communicate all this is going to be contributing so into the future i think data science is important for us but as i said knowing the principles well uh, data governance in accounting financial programs all this is going to be important for us because the way that we manage data is going to be different and um, as trusted third parties which we are we'll i think we'll have a lot of responsibilities uh, with regard to how data is as data custodian audits and several things which will come because of the way that the banking system is going 5 years from now most of your current banking will be gone gartner is saying giving 5 years in our country we may give 10 years but it is sure may the because i work on the i am a member on the cyber risk uh, committee of security risk committee of rbi i can tell you many of the banks are very very serious about innovation and the way they are adapting this technology sometimes is little even scary because they don't look at it properly they just want to catch the market because they are ruling large banks have no business because the uh, fintechs are taking away their business so what they do they simply tie up with the fintechs so they provide the refinance they do the business so in way in a way it is headache less for them but the problem is systems get integrated so you have a new audit problem there so helping dealing with risk of disruptive technology is important and cyber security is certainly going to create a huge challenge for ifc auditors i am sure that's a great area to work on so aud we auditors will become trust brokers wherein we will be asked for giving trust everywhere and uh, it will be more profound dimension but significantly i think it will be digital and ifc will be the core principle of control so with that i just want to give the takeaways is technology is no more just one silo but it's a fabric of the entire entity every enterprise ifc forms the foundation of financial and operational success so ifc need to be embedded in the technology we cannot have something running separately auditor's role is in evaluating the adequacy of tech driven ifc and ifc for tech both are important one where the rules are getting embedded inside technology but also to control technology it doesn't run haphazard right and a robust ifc requires a framework driven approach as i said principles remain the same we have to adhere to the principles discipline is extremely important otherwise the way that we are seen we are going to get more punished in the future either by hacker or something like whatever is going on so i think we we have to go back to our grandma days to learn their values of uh, sincerity discipline value system all that i'll stop with this uh, which is a very favorite quote from bhagwan raman maharishi and i think it holds very true for these current times your own self realization is the greatest service you can render to the world thank you so much i really appreciate your two hours that you have spent on this i sincerely hope it has been somewhat useful and informative to you um if you have any questions whatsoever of course we can take some questions here but i am always available on these uh, coordinates you can always ping me thanks again for everyone in the management here uh, i think you have all been exemplary uh, and people who have been sitting throughout two hours <laughs> that itself i must thank you it's a pain thank you so much back to the organizers thank you sir thank you so much sir anil sir please anil sir if you want to say something please proceed no issues sir vitter sir if uh, if you don't uh, come for an year it will be, we will feel a big vacuum <laughs> so we always call you for uh at least once in a year to come to us i'm honored sir thank you for those kind <laughs> unfortunately we couldn't uh, arrange a darshan for you in padminam <laughs> you are away <laughs> that's what i i i i always my man is mr padmanaban who takes yes. me to padmanaban <laughs> <laughs> so over to rama uh, okay sir uh, thank you so much sir for the wonderful session you have enlightened us on the different areas which we really need to focus uh, in the future while doing the audit uh, rather than the normal checking we used to do uh, the age old practices uh, thank you so much uh, now uh, formally we have to give you a thanks uh, for being with us for these two hours uh, 
so now we request uh, ca martin joseph who is the secretary of uh, alapura branch uh, to propose the vote of thanks formally good evening to all uh, respected chairman of uh, uh, trivandrum uh, branch of I ica uh, all other uh, chairman uh, from kollam alapura and kottayam uh, respected speaker of the day uh, c r vikramraj um, <clears throat> it was indeed a, a very uh, useful session for all of us um, uh, i am 100% sure that the importance of internal financial control especially in the technological uh, disruptive era uh, is a very relevant topic uh, i i personally and uh, on behalf of all the people who attended this meeting uh, i would like to thank uh, the chairman of uh, trivandrum branch uh, for his initiative uh, or for his endurance to get it approved by the cpe committee of the icai uh, in uh, for arranging this kind of a program in association with uh, Um, many other branches in the south kerala so i personally thank uh, ca anil raj for his initiative and also i would like to thank uh, ca r vikram raj for his valuable time and for sharing his knowledge and thoughts on this topic it was uh, very useful for all of us also i would like to thank uh, all other uh, chairman from kollam uh, kottayam alappuzha uh, and managing committee members from all these chapters Uh, for their contribution and for their support also i would like to uh, thank all the participants of this meeting uh, and for all the viewers of this meeting uh, thanks uh, thanks for your wonderful participation thanks again and uh, jai icai thank you so much ms martin thanks everyone thank, thank you so thank you so much thanks a lot with this we have come to the end of the session thank you so much vital sir once again thank you all thank you roman thanks sir.